Hi and welcome everyone to our course for automatic control. In this video we will start to having an introduction about automatic control or what we are going to need or what we are going to achieve inside our course. So the first step in order to control a system or uh, achieve a certain response we use automatic control automatic control here is used to reach a desired response for a system so let's say we have a certain system like this and this system i'm going to subject it into a step input like this okay now this system can respond like this okay also it can respond like this it can also respond like this so there are many responses for the system so if i would like to have a desired response for the system and reach the steady state value that i need i must control this system so the first step in order to control system we have three main steps first step number one is that we are going to do the mathematical modeling of the system we would like to take our system and model it we would like to see or observe the equations that represent our system so we would like to convert or represent it mathematically in order to find the response of the system or the transient response of the system or the dynamic response of the system by analyzing this response we can design our controller in order to adjust some parameters inside our system or control certain parameters in order to reach a certain steady state values or a, st a certain dynamic response so in order to do this we have some types of control systems we have the first type which is called an open loop control system and we have a closed loop control system let's see these type of system and let's compare between them so in an open loop system we have the system will be like this so we have a certain input the input that i would like let's say that i would like a speed of the motor to be 1500 rpm okay this is a reference speed okay now this reference speed is given to a certain controller that translates this speed into a control signal this control signal can be for example a voltage of 220 volt giving to our process which will be in this case our motor okay and then we will see the output the output will be speed of the motor okay now look carefully here so we have a certain input the controller gives a certain response based on this input without observing what happened in the output so for example if our speed is 1500 the controller will keep the signal as it is right however if the speed 1600 it should decrease this voltage right it should bring it down let's say to 200 volt so that the speed goes down however this type of control which is the open loop system the controller doesn't know what happens at the output the controller is a blind controller i call it a blind controller blind controller why because it doesn't see what happens at the output it just to take the input whatever is the input you are giving i am giving a certain control signal regardless of what happening in the out to make this controller more powerful we have to take the output signal and get it back to the controller this is done by using a measurement unit so for the same example we will have here the output which is the speed we are going to measure the speed this is a measurement unit measuring the speed and take this speed to the controller 
For example, if we have a reference of 1,500 and we have an output of 1,400, so this measurement unit will give it back. So it will tell you, hey, the output here, output equal to 1,400 RPM. So you can see the controller compares between the input and what happened at the output so it looks at the error between them you can see there is a difference of 100 rpm so the controller understand now is that we need to increase the voltage in order to uh, overcome this difference right or compensate for this difference so the controller will increase the voltage if the speed increased beyond the reference value this one will be negative 100 rpm so the controller will understand that we will bring it down so you can see that by doing this it is not a blind controller it now sees or observes what happens at the output that is basically basically the difference between an input uh, an open loop control system and a closed loop control system so let's see some examples or compare between them. So the open loop control system will be like this. The output of the system does not affect the control action. A blind controller. The control system does not see what happens at the output. So that's why the output itself can be affected significantly by any disturbances. Now you will ask me, what do you mean by disturbances? So for example, this controller itself gives us a certain output dependent on its input signal. If the motor itself um, ages or uh, after a long time of working, its friction increases. For example, okay, so its friction will increase. So the expected speed will be brought down, right? However, our control doesn't know this because it doesn't look at the output. Another thing is that a disturbance to the motor is that we increase the load. So if you have a motor connected to a certain load and another motor without any kind of load, these two will have a difference in speed, right? This one will have a lower speed than another motor without any kind of connected load or in the no load condition right however again our controller doesn't see what happens at the output so it doesn't observe this kind of disturbance the disturbance of an additional torque uh, or torque load or load torque added to our motor Another example is the toaster. So you can see the toaster here. You will see that, for example, we have our uh, process, which is our toaster here. Okay. And I give my own controller, which is a time controller or a timer here. I would like, let's say, a crisp brown toast, right? So what does it do? It takes this input like this and translates it into two minutes. So it will operate this toaster here for two whole minutes, okay? And then we will have the out. After two minutes, it will be completely turned off, right? However, you will see that uh, not all of the toast added to this toaster are similar to each other, right? So for example, we can have the toast here can become more than crisp brown becomes crisper than crisp brown now since we don't have any kind of feedback this is what we call feedback from output to the input here to the controller so the controller doesn't know even what happens to the toast even if it burns it doesn't care it just operates for two minutes regardless of the output so in this case, we will have, or the toaster will be affected by disturbances. Another open loop control system, which is the motor position. So you can see for an open loop system, we given it a certain command like a speed 
and we put it into the controller which will give us the control signal in the form of a certain voltage to our motor and it will give us the output which is the position in this control so you'll see that you'll see that for example if i say hey i would like you to move at five or let's say 10 centimeters okay so 10 centimeters so the controller will give 220 volt let's say to the motor itself for let's say a time of two seconds okay so the motor itself will say hey i know that when i operate this motor for two seconds with the speed of the motor it can move from this position to this position which is needed okay by the effect of the motor however the open loop system forgot an important part which is that if this conveyor here conveyor belt here has more loads okay this conveyor belt will move slower than expected so instead of when we operate for two seconds this conveyor belt will move from this position to let's say here okay because it doesn't know what kind of disturbance we have or any kind of load on this conveyor belt which affects the speed of the motor and subsequently it will affect the motion of this conveyor belt so this is a problem again with the open loop system another one which is immersion water heater what i mean by this let's say i would like to we have a water here and i would like to heat it to let's say 50 celsius degrees so i put a water heater here immersion water heater and i connect it to our supply now this water heater will keep heating this water even if the water reaches 60 celsius degrees it doesn't care it will keep on heating this water why because it doesn't have any kind of feedback unless you unplug this or there is a timer here okay in these cases it doesn't have any feedback from the output to solve this problem for a closed loop system for the motor we will take a feedback of the position hey did i reach my own position that i want or not if I reach the position, then the controller will turn off the motor. If I didn't reach the position, the controller will keep the motor as it is. Keep it on. So the output is feedback. So we are feeding it back to our controller to compare it with our command input or our reference value. So the controller will take an action based on the error between them that's why closed loop will overcome the disturbances like changing of the load on the conveyor belt okay and also a closed loop can be used to control speed of a motor now for our example here you can see that in this example for an open loop we moved for a certain until uh, uh, for a certain time or for a specific time so let's say we moved in this position these loads didn't go to the other side as we wanted because we have uh, our uh, load here on the conveyor belt for a closed loop we will have a sensor here that will sense when the last one will go out so in the closed loop it will have a feedback so it will keep on operating until all of this go away not only this but you can use this controller for a speed okay so what do you mean by speed so if i would like this motor to operate at a certain speed which is a reference speed okay a constant speed so the controller will it change its out will it change its voltage based on the load here so for an open loop it doesn't know so when we have a large load it will move slower when we have a light load it will move faster right however a closed loop will detect the speed of the motor so in this case if we have large load it will increase the voltage so that it will move with the same speed as desired 
and when this load is removed as in this case it will bring the voltage down so that it will uh, cause the motor to slow down and bring it back to the reference signal now for the example for the immersion water heater you will find that what we do is that we have here our heater right and in addition to it we will have a feedback what do you mean a feedback feedback by adding here by adding here a temperature sensor which senses the temperature of water and it tells you hey you would like it at a 50 Celsius degrees right so I will measure the heat or measure the temperature of water so if it is a 48 hey it is still 48 so this heater will still be in operation now until we reach 50 Celsius degrees it will tell it hey we reach it 50 Celsius degrees okay so I will turn off this electricity from our uh, or I will stop it from heating this water okay so this is a system with a feedback which you can see that now a closed loop system is more powerful than an open loop system